Okwebana sketches a single mother and the dance of the Mustang are just some of the poems contained in Tariro Ndoro's debut poetry collection book and it's titled A Gringada, Like a Gringa, Like a Foreigner. In this offering, the Zimbabwean-born poet and storyteller gives us an honest exploration of dislocation and unbelonging in its forms while touching carefully on the subjects of exile from language, exile from country and exile from sanity. Well, Tariro is here to do all the talking and she's going to tell us all about her book. It's great to have you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me, bro. I really want to st uh, start talking about th the title and its significance. I mean, a gringada, like a gringa, like a foreigner. Bring us closer to where your mind was at when you chose this as the title. Well, um, it's actually taken from one of the section um, headings of in the book. And where I'd gotten it is that I was reading a lot about the bicultural experience. So um, if you're living in a different country and you're experiencing their culture, or if you're a black person and you're living around white people and you're experiencing their culture. And where I found the word is that I was reading a book and it had a lot about Spanish things. And there was this word that they'd used to um, describe people who had sort of gone a step away from their culture and so they'd say agringada so you're acting like a white woman but mm. then they'd say it like in a bad way so for instance um you know kids who've gone to a model c school and like they speak a certain type of english with a mm. twang and then people are like oh yeah papa whatever oh yeah so that's the sort of um sentiment that <laughs> that makes a lot of sense now in the book you explore uh, the sense of dislocation mm. and and belonging. Talk to us about some of those themes and how you've experienced it as a Zimbabwean in South Africa. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I think um, mainly it's, you know, when people say certain things. So a lot of the times you just feel like you get along. But like one of um, the quotes in this book is that I was talking to a friend of mine and then she's just like, ah, uh, quere, quere, something. Mm. And she was joking when she said it. Mm. But because of... Um, especially what was going on in 2015, that sort of had a connotation that it had that was very negative. And, yeah, so, you know, like little acts of racism, little acts of xenophobia that aren't big in when they happen, but then as they build up, you begin to feel more and more like you don't Well, I think they're big because anything that mm. alters your, your state of, of being or seeks to uh, make you feel bad in, in, mm. in, in, in a certain way, whether intended or, or unintended, is, is, is big, but you're mm. probably more gracious than most people. Okay. Now, uh, is, is this book a reflection of, of your personal journey as, as a Zimbabwean living in South Africa? Yes, it is. But then I've also sort of taken other people's um, experiences and put it there so that it's a more holistic. So you, you must have then engaged other people. Tell us about just some of the people that you've spoken to and uh, share any experiences that came up as a highlight. Okay. Um, so most of the experiences I'd have um, were when I was just talking to my friends or, you know, whenever there was a debate about... Um, xenophobia and i'd go online and you know people online they're they not brutal <laughs> they people don't hide not what nice they're thinking. Online. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so then i took a lot of that and um one of the one of the poems in my book is actually a conversation so um around the time that operation fiela happened you know a lot of people would say things like you know xenophobia is over so because i remember in 2015 there was like an uprising at first and then that died down and then it happened again mm. and one of the things when I first wrote the first draft of that poem I shared it with a South African friend and he's like yeah no it doesn't happen anymore we're chilled with Zimbabweans we're chilled with foreigners and then a few months after that um, that's when it all sprung up in Durban mm. again and so for me it was one of those moments where you know you want to say I was right but at the same time you're disappointed because it's yeah. not a good thing that's happening yeah. And yeah. speak to us about just the process of, of putting together this book. What has it done for you personally? Okay, I think <laughs> it's given me a chance to reflect. Because I think a lot of things happen, especially I think in the African context, we don't always have space to, um, to say bad things have happened, let's sit down, let's mm. process them, let's purge them from our collective memory. And I think writing this book gave me that space to 
write it all down and think about it and then sort of make peace with it. Mm. Your poetry has actually appeared in a number of literary publications. Uh, tell us about that and, and has you know, that helped you in any way? Has that helped your career in any way? So, yes, my poetry has been in New Contrast, a new coin, an Oxford poetry <laughs> that was surprising. Wow. Um, I think the ways in which it helped me is that I was able to see what works and what doesn't. Because, you know, when you're, a, when you're an artist of any kind, you know, whether you're a poet or you're a writer or a musician, you're always sending things out. And there's certain types of things that get accepted and published, and then there's certain types of things that don't. So it helps you to see, you know, what's working. And then also sometimes other artists will actually get in touch with you and say, you know, I saw this in this journal, like, let's collaborate on something. So that can be a good thing. Ah, yeah. Tariru, I was so hoping that you could give us a stanza from one of your poems, but we are unfortunately out of time. Thank oh, you so okay. much for coming on the show. It's great to have you and all the best. Okay, thank you for having me. <laughs> all right, uh, that was, of course, Mbavian born uh, South African uh, poet and storyteller Tariru Ndoro, who's been speaking to us about her debut poetry collection book that she titled A Gringada, Like a Gringa, Like a Foreigner. You can also join us for our Sunday book feature just to talk about some of the books that you are currently reading or have read whether you're a lone reader or belong to a book club just send us some of your favorite pics all you have to do is send us an email check us out on Facebook or send us a tweet of a picture of a book with a relevant caption by using uh, those platforms at Morning Live SABC is where you can reach us our Facebook page is Morning Live SABC and of course our email address is morninglive at sabc.co.za